Hello everyone, this is Totter333, and uh, sorry I haven't posted a video in a long time, uh, life happens, uh, but hopefully this one will make it up to you guys. So I've gotten a lot of requests for uh, a video on how to make an online game in Blender, and uh, as a lot of you can probably guess, that's a heck of a lot easier said than done. So I decided to, I, I'm going to do that but I'm not going to show you guys how to write all of the code and everything like that because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch me type code that uh, may or may not make sense to you. So what I've done is uh, I've put some links in the description and I have, uh, oh yeah, go ahead, subscribe to Monster Cat Media, I love their music. Anyway, um, <laughs> go ahead and download the uh, Python scripts in the uh, description and you'll end up with these guys. Um, and these are what we're going to be using to make our game online and you know pretty cool. So uh, let's take a look at what some of these are. So this guy is uh, this is just the host and this is what the blender file is going to be connecting to. So you can have as many blender files connecting to one of these as you want and uh, that will allow the blender files to communicate to each other so uh... It, it's gonna it's gonna start out by asking for a port and if you just press enter it'll use the default port 4445 so for the rest of this tutorial i'm just gonna assume that that's what everybody's gonna use so i'm gonna close that uh... these two guys are just modules this is kind of where the magic happens. If you want to go inside of them and edit them and do whatever, feel free. Um, just know that it might not work with uh, the example files that I release here. If you do. Um, and this guy, we're going to be copying and pasting him into our Blender file a little bit later. Uh, but as I mentioned previously, these two are modules. Uh, so what that means is in order for us to reference them in our Blender file, our Blender file has to be in this same folder. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back into our Blender uh, file and we're going to save this uh, this particular Blend file into that same folder. And that should be it. I'm going to name it uh, Network Game and hit save and you'll see that now it's here so now we can access any of these scripts alright so let's get into the actual blender side of this tutorial I'm gonna hit control right arrow to uh, make the view a little bit easier to work with alright so poor default cube always always has to get deleted uh, and we're gonna swap him out for an empty I'm just gonna add a sphere and uh, this empty is going to basically be controlling all the logic for um, our network and uh, he's going to need five properties so okay and I'll stretch it out so you guys can see it alrighty so the first property he's going to need is host and that's going to be a string the second property is going to be called port and that's going to be an integer. And the third property is, uh, let's see, what is it, ping? And that is also an integer. And then connection. And that is a string. And the last one is uh, players. And that's just going to say how many players there are. And that's an integer as well. And uh, we're going to want to be able to see these in our game engine, so we're going to switch it to game and uh, tell it to show debug properties. And we're going to check all of these boxes. Alrighty, so these are the only two that we actually need to set ourselves. So uh, before when we started the server, uh, the default port was 4445, so we're going to use that. Three fours and a five. And uh, for host, we're just going to be uh, referencing the computer that is running the host file. So uh, I'm going to try and have a server up, and uh, that server is going to be located at slave1.zap2.h. 
net. So if you guys just want to try and get an example uh, working, uh, that's what you're going to be using. And uh, the example blend file will always already have this typed in, so you shouldn't even need to type anything in. Uh, but if you want to connect to your own server that is on your computer uh, at home, you can type in either the name of your computer or its local IP address. So its local IP address will probably look like 192.168.something.something. Uh, so you can Google how to look up a local IP address uh, if you have to do that. Uh, but I know that my computer's name is quantum, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to type that. So now we're, we're, what we're going to want to do is uh, start getting into some of the logic, and there's not a whole lot of it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, add an always sensor and connect that to a Python controller. And we're going to switch that controller to a module. And in there we're going to reference uh, one of these scripts. We're going to reference this guy. So uh, let's see. So we're going to type in network.network. .network. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. And uh, this guy is going to be uh, in control of, you know, all of the network objects and stuff like that. And he's going to want to be able to add objects. So we need to give him an edit object actuator. And we're going to connect that. And the one he's going to be looking for is named spawner. So we got to name it spawner. And pretty much leave everything else as is. And we're going to add a second always sensor and a second Python controller and connect those. Now uh, this Python controller is uh, still going to be a script uh, and we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste this run network.py. So we're going to make a new script. And I'll just name it the same thing, but you can name it whatever you want. Uh, and we're going to open that up and just copy the content straight into there. And that should be just fine. Alrighty, so uh, if you look at this, you'll notice uh, if you know anything about Python, you will, you will recognize that this is looking for a sensor called run. So we need to give it that and make sure that this is called run. Also we need to make sure it's using run network. And basically, this script is going to be in charge of sending and receiving everything. Uh, now the drawback with uh, networking in general is that uh, a lot of people, what they'll try to do, uh, if they're just learning about networking, is they'll send as much data as fast as they possibly can. Uh, which in some cases is good, like over a local network, uh, but if you fill up a, a network buffer too fast, it will overflow and completely kill everything. So we don't want to be sending too fast. So what we're going to do to avoid that is we're going to throttle it back just a little bit and we're going to set this to true. We're going to set the frequency to 1 and we're going to select tap. And that's just going to slow it down just enough so it's, it's still very very fast uh, but it's not going to flood our network. Alrighty, so right now we have everything set up and uh, we should be able to actually connect to a server now. So let's go ahead and uh, open up this and I'm just going to hit enter and we're going to start it. And as you can see we've got a ping that's jumping around a little bit here. Uh, part of that's because I'm recording so it's not really liking the overhead. Uh, but it's saying we're connected and there's one player in the game and uh, it's also saying who we are connected to. Uh, so that's all fine and dandy, but that's not going to do us a whole lot of good if uh, we want to actually send the position of some objects over. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, so there's a couple of drawbacks to this method. Uh, one of those drawbacks is that uh, in order for an object to be added, um, 
it needs to be in a second layer. So if I've got an object in here and uh, I say, oh well, here he is, and tell all the other clients to add another one like it, they're not going to be able to if it's in the first scene already. So every object that you want to be controlled over the network is going to need to be spawned uh, from the second layer. So let's just go ahead and uh, add a default cube. And he's just going to need a couple of things. He's going to need a property called local. And that property is going to be a boolean. And it's going to be set to true. And he's also going to need a, uh, a logic brick. And it's going to be an always sensor connected to a Python controller. And this Python controller, again, is going to be a module. And that's going to reference net object dot net object and the O is capitalized and you're basically just referencing this guy right here so we're gonna make sure that uh, everything we need to know about this object is in a form that can actually be sent across the network and that's what that's doing and uh, this right here is just basically telling the server that hey this is my object and uh, nobody gets to control it except for me uh, so the next thing we're going to need is uh, an object to actually spawn that cube. So let's go ahead and uh, add that empty. Let's see, add empty, and I'm going to make it a little bit of a different empty so we know which one it is. And uh, we're going to hit always and along with an add object or edit object and we're going to tell it to add a cube. Now, uh, another downside to this uh, method is that any object that gets added pretty much has to stay there permanently uh, because if you delete it, the server has no way of knowing and uh, it'll just kind of fluke out and it doesn't really like it very much. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be upgrading it in the future to hopefully make it handle that better. Uh, but for right now, you're you're not going to want to set this any limiter and you're not going to want to call end object at all. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, see what this looks like. So we've got our server running and we're going to hit P and uh, it does pretty much exactly what we expected. Ping jumps around so we're connected and uh, the cube is just kind of sitting there. So this is where the uh, example file comes in handy. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how that works. Um, now I've got a, a laptop sitting here next to me and uh, you guys can't see it but I assure you it's there and I'll prove it to you in a second uh, because I'm going to go ahead and open up this example file. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and join that same server and uh, all this file does is add two cubes and they're going to go around in circles and uh, you guys may be wondering why I'm only getting uh, 20 to 30 frames a second. Uh, that's because of the overhead that my cam recorder is causing. So I really only have about 15% of my CPU to work with here. Um, so without that, uh, this will run at a full 60 frames a second, uh, despite any network lag you may be having. So you guys won't have to worry about that. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what happens when I... Uh, add my laptop in to the mix as well. He's going to go ahead and uh, add two more cubes and uh, both screens are displaying pretty much exactly the same thing. And when I exit the blend file from my laptop you're going to see uh, his cubes just kind of freeze and then uh, shortly after disappear. So that's, uh, that's the server handling left clients. So yeah, that's uh, that's basically how this works. Uh, really all it's going to let you do, uh, which is actually pretty powerful, is it's going to let you add an object and uh, that object will be updated across both blend files. And essentially that's really all you need. Um, and later I'll be adding some things like uh, if you want to send a message to a specific client, I'll add some easier ways of doing that. Uh, but for now this should be uh, pretty fun. You could maybe make some 
physics-based games, uh, explorer games, I don't know, whatever whatever you can think of, you could probably make it with this. And if you want to do some fancy stuff, you can probably uh, get to modifying my scripts. But yeah, so that's basically all there is to it. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. Um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, try and connect to my server. If that doesn't work, it's uh, probably down. Uh, and in a second tutorial, I'll show you guys how to get uh, how to get this to connect. Actually, I probably won't show you. I'll just tell you right now. So if you want to get this to work, um, if you want to get a host that uh, other people can connect to from across the world, uh, go ahead and Google port forwarding. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to port forward port number 4445, that default port. And, uh, oh yay, college. Um, you're going to have to port forward that port, port, and once you do that, then this, uh, this will be connectable from anybody outside of your network. You just have to give them your external IP address. And uh, that should be pretty much all there is to it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, hope you have some fun with this. And uh, go ahead and if you make anything with this, uh, show me what it is. I'd love to see it. Uh, I hope that people use this and enjoy it. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys have a great day. This is Totter333, signing out.